But first, there is drama in Chicago public schools between Mayor Brandon Johnson, CPS CEO Pedro Martinez, and the teachers union. And this conflict could cost Martinez his job. Joining us now with more is Chicago Sun-Times education reporter Nader Issa. Welcome back, Nader. Hey, thanks for having me. Also here, WBEZ education reporter Sarah Carp. Hey, Sarah. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Thank you both for being here. I know, Nader, that four sources who are close to Mayor Johnson, they've told you that he wants Pedro Martinez to resign. So where do things stand right now? Yeah, Sarah and I reported that last week uh, with with our colleague Fran Spielman. I don't know. I mean, up in the air, un- whatever word or phrase there is to say, we don't know, and it's unclear. You <laughs> okay. can use that. And it's sort of just at a standstill. We reported first reported last month that uh, the mayor was laying the groundwork to get Pedro Martinez out as CPS CEO. Mm-hmm. Last week, they had this meeting where he told him face-to-face, I want you to leave. And Martinez responded and said, no, I'm going to wait for the Board of Education to see what they say because they're my boss. They're the ones that actually have the ability to get rid of me if they want to. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did sources tell you about why Johnson wants him to resign? There are a few factors, and it's sort of the latest in this ongoing saga from the past few months where there's this big disagreement over a couple financial issues. One, the CPS budget. How did they close this $500 million deficit? And uh, how are they going to fight for more state funding? Number two is this pension payment. Uh, It's a pension payment for non-teaching staff at Chicago Public Schools. There's this municipal pension fund where a little more than half of uh, city employees in there work for CPS. Mm -hmm. The city has historically paid that payment. Under Mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, they moved that to the CPS budget. Martinez doesn't want it there anymore. Mm. And so there's this tussle between where does that money go and and how is CPS going to solve its financial issues moving forward? How is Martinez responding so far? He's said that he's not going to resign. I think in his in his uh, sort of bland, I don't know if that's what we call it, statement last week in response to our questions uh, and uh, on our reporting that they had this meeting, he didn't even address this meeting or that he was asked to resign. All he said was, we're looking forward to continuing our work. Uh, I mean, earlier last week before that meeting, he had spent the week presenting this new five-year strategic plan for Mm -hmm. the district, which was unanimously approved by the board last uh, Wednesday. And so he's just basically going about like it's business as usual uh, and and saying that I'm not leaving until I hear otherwise from the Board of Education, which is my boss. I see. Now, there were a series of tweets on Sunday from the CTU, and they announced that their House of Delegates issued a unanimous vote of no confidence in Martinez. Those tweets read in part, quote, the vote followed disclosures that Martinez has been considering another round of school closures, co-locations, and cuts to balance the district's budget, end quote. Sarah, let's bring you in here. Talk about the evidence that the union may or may not have here to back up their claim. They're saying Martinez is considering closing or consolidating schools. Where are they getting that from? So they got a document, they obtained a document that shows a whole bunch of schools and where they could co-locate. So they got, you know, they got this document and it does seem to show that somebody in CPS's administration, at least for a moment, contemplated school Mm -hmm. closings or consolidations. And, of course, they think that a directive like that would be coming from the top. Right. And this wasn't something that you would, you know, just do in 10 minutes. This was something that somebody put thought into. Um, However, the CEO says he did – This does exist. He does not deny it. This analysis does exist, he says. But he says that it was done. It was just, you know, part of a large, you know, discussion about options, and it was quickly dismissed. And so he has really doubled down on the idea that he is not considering Mm -hmm. any closing. Well, so we're clear, what's the difference between closing and consolidating schools? Nothing. (laughs) It's, It's the same thing. I mean, essentially, what you would say is you would say, like, this school would co-locate or consolidate with this other school but in the end you know one school would no longer exist and another school would exist Mm -hmm. so in its place so you know there there have been different um configurations i mean you could definitely have a school building that could have 
two schools in it, you know, like with two principals and two assistant principals. But even in those cases, eventually, usually they become one school over time. I see. So, so what steps has Martinez taken to assure the parents and the students and the staff that this is not the case. I'm, I'm not doing this. This is not my plan. Well, he, he's written letters to everybody, all the above. So okay. he, he, wrote, he wrote letters. Now, the other thing that you asked about was um, staff layoffs, right? And, and uh, you know, mass, also furloughs, which has come up to pay for the, the teacher's contract. And this he has not outright denied. And, in fact, there is this issue that he has offered the Chicago Teachers Union raises of four to four or five percent over the next four years Mm -hmm. at the moment there's no money in this year's budget to pay for those raises um this would be about a hundred million dollar cost so how does he plan to get to that point if he doesn't as nader was saying take a loan yeah if he's refusing to take a loan so you know there's only so many levers that that a school district has to save money. And one of them is, you know, staff layoffs Mm -hmm. or furloughs. So he has not denied that. And, you know, certainly it seems like that would be an option at least. If you're just tuning in, this is Reset. I'm Sasha Ann Simons, and our guests are WBEZ and Chicago Sun-Times education reporters Nader Issa and Sarah Karp. And we're talking about the drama that's happening between the CTU Uh, Pedro Martinez, who's the CEO of CPS, as well as Chicago's mayor and the future of Martinez's role. Now, you mentioned earlier, Nader, that the two of you reported a month ago about Mayor Johnson sort of laying the groundwork to fire Pedro Martinez. Uh, Do you see what we're talking about now, this current moment, as maybe a fruit of that effort? Yeah, it's it's this has been an ongoing uh, saga, like we said, and there's there's no separating the two. I mean, Sarah just mentioned the loan, uh, that's a, a major sticking point, yeah. like we said. And it, it would be a short-term, high-interest loan in order to pay for the Chicago Teachers Union contract and to take on this pension payment from the city. It just sounds like it could be detrimental down the line. Yeah, well, th- there have been high-interest, short-term loans at CPS in the past, and they've the, the total cost of the loan and the debt has ballooned because it's high interest and it takes a long time to pay off. Mm-hmm. And then in the meantime, CPS historically has been underfunded. They don't have the money that they need. And the, this, this disagreement over how Martina should handle it is what got us to this moment. He's refused to take out this loan. Interestingly enough, he was the chief financial officer for the district years back when the district was taking out these types of loans. But he's he doesn't want to do that now. He says that'll be bad financially for the school district. Mm-hmm. He wants to figure out another solution. The mayor, the Chicago Teachers Union, they want him to just put this all out there, take the loan, and then put maximum pressure on Springfield and the federal government for more funding. Mm. So that it's, it's just this tension has led us to this moment. Now, here's the reality, Sarah. The mayor can't fire Martinez, right? The, this is power that rests with the Chicago Board of Education. I wonder if you have any sense of what the board wants to do here, what they plan to do. Well, the mayor's office last week, um, a source in the mayor's office came out and said that um, that the that Martinez has lost the board. And you have to remember that um, the mayor appoints the board. Right. So, and and I, let me just say how unprecedented this whole scenario is. This is. You know, usually, you know, I've, I've been covering Chicago Public Schools for a fair amount of time. And usually, basically, the mayor tells the board what to do and the board does it. Mm-hmm. And in essence, it's always felt like the CEO is really hired and fired by the mayor, not right. by the board. Even though the board is sort of the, the, the people that sign the, sign yeah. the dotted line, this is a mayoral-controlled school district. And this, and this is a mayor that has close ties to the CTU. Yes, he does. So... The, Again, unprecedented. Unprecedented. So <laughs> it's so this whole all of these little, you know, different things that are happening are unprecedented. And and let me just, you know, follow up on something that, that Nader just said. You know, in the past, Pedro Martinez was CFO of Chicago Public Schools when the school district took a lot of loans. I mean, right now, um, Chicago Public Schools is nine point three billion dollars in Ooh. debt. Every year, the school district pays, you know, upwards of $800 million in just debt payments on past loans. Um, but, 
you know, taking if, if someone were I, I keep saying this to people, if someone were to blindfold me and say who who has what opinion in this situation, whose side is on, I would probably choose all wrong because everybody's sort of, you know, changed side. I mean, it used to be the CTU was very, very, very against high interest loans. Mm-hmm. And it used to be that that, you know, the, the school district would take high interest ro- loans so that they could do what they want to do. And and so it's it's a very unusual scenario. Um, but also, you know, one thing that, that you have to keep in mind, like a lot of people say, well, why would you want to put this high interest loan? The alternative of cutting staff is what the CTU and Mayor Johnson are trying to not do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's sort of like, do you cut staff? Mm-hmm. Do you, you know, change classrooms in the, you know, right now we've already started a school year. That's do you right. take out teachers? Do you take out aides? Do you take out, you know, what do you do? And how does that hurt children? There's a lot to consider there. No, Nader, it would also actually be very costly to fire Martinez, right? Yeah, his contract was amended uh, a couple years ago. Before the election, the last mayoral election, Mayor Lori Lightfoot was still in office. His contract was amended to add two things. One, if he was fired without cause, Mm -hmm. they just wanted to make a change, he would stay on for six months. And that's part of the dilemma right now is that if there's no cause, he's going to still be here and continue to negotiate the CTU contract. Right. If he's fired with cause, there has to be some legitimate reason. His contract doesn't say anything about about not letting him sue. Now, he does have severance. It's not a full year. It would come out to around $120,000 that he would need to be paid out if he was uh, mm. fired without cause. Uh, so that that is a factor and a decision to make. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, I'm looking here, 138000 so yeah. even more. Yeah. Uh, so the CTU is also in the middle of contract negotiations right now. Uh, it, so sum this up, Sarah. I mean, if Martinez leaves or stays in the post, I mean, how does that drama affect those CTU negotiations? Well, one thing that we can say for sure is that the CTU does not believe that Martinez is moving fast enough or moving, you know, in the right direction that they that they want for this contract to get settled. If Martinez stays around, I think that um, it, it'll. I've heard CTU president and vice president say it's going to be very hard to get this contract settled. Now, what does that mean? The the Chicago Teachers Union is, you know, legally cannot strike for a, quite a few months because mm-hmm. of all the processes that it needs to go through. But you know, if he's still around, that's it's going to be very hard to get this contract done, and also. The Chicago Teachers Union finds a f- ways to get around all the processes yeah. for having to strike when they want to get around it. So, you know what? I'm not saying I'm not saying they're going to strike. I'm just saying that it, it would be hard to settle a contract mm, yeah. with Martinez around. How do you think this could impact the school year ahead, Nader? Well, either way, there there are ramifications for parents, for families in the scenario that Sarah just laid out. That's obviously one. If there isn't a solution for more funding and the C2 lands a deal. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're looking at mid-year cuts to pay for it, whether that's furloughs or layoffs. I mean, those have huge implications for schools and, and students. And I, I, I think one thing, one sort of area we briefly mentioned that we're leaving out, I, I think the, the, the person or the, let's say the town that holds all the keys in this is Springfield yeah. and Governor Pritzker. Because either way, CPS is going to need to pay for a, a C2 contract, right. whether it's their all of their demands or just a little bit. It, it averages out uh, usually to around $100 million a year C2 contracts do historically. Mm-hmm. That money is not there. So someone's going to need to pay for it if the school district's not going to be affected. Ooh, we've been speaking with education reporters Nader Issa and Sarah Karp from the Chicago Sun-Times and WBEZ. Thank you both so much. Thank, Thank you. you.